Okay, we're going to work problem 2.13. I think I've done this a few times, but I'm going to go through and kind of think about this in terms of doing it purely algebraically, and there's a reason why. This is one of these problems that if you don't read it, you forget the fact, you forget one of the facts, and nothing gets solved. And so I'm going to sketch this right now. Add ins, don't want to do that review, start inking do my best to keep it straight this time but this is a concurrent force problem which it won't be later most of these problems that you're seeing you've seen are going to turn out to be solving reactions so I'm going to point that out first if this is a tower here right if it's a right a fixed point there a fixed moment if it has a T there a tension there at A, a tension there and a tension there really what you're interested in solving is the reactions However, what this one, if we call this T1, we call this T2, and we call this T3, you realize that if we write out to start T3 equals 8 and T1 equals T2 equals, if you would think, right, so we'll call this TB for T both. All of a sudden, in that, and you're going to see some similarities later when you get to reaction problems where you know the direction. In that is the key to this problem. So what is the, how do you solve a concurrent force problem? You basically show everything in tension. Tension there, tension there, tension there. You, you write a table, basically, if you think about it in terms of magnitude, direction, the x component, and the y component right remembering of course that this is going to be the cosine and this is going to be the sine if you think about the angle from the standard position angle so the magnitude of the first one is 8 the direction is a minus 45 or if you think about it 315 the second is T that T direction is going to be 210 or 30 degrees this one here is we call that TB and the third one is also TB and it has a direction of 180 plus 60 240 and you know these are all tension and so when you add up these you'll end up with the system you'll have actually in the end you only need one side of these I think to solve you'll end up with one either one of these equations will solve it but if you think about this is this is 8 times the cosine of minus 45 and 8 times the sine of minus 45 this is T sub B times the cosine of 210 T sub B or for T sub both times the sine of 210 this is T sub B times the cosine of 240. This is T sub B times the sine of 240. And if you think about either one of these, we'll solve out, right? If you know that the, you know, if you think about the X has to be equal to zero, because of what? Because the resultant must be vertical. And so the equation that gets you where you want to be is in fact that these equal zero. Now I point out that even as I've worked this many many different times taking that maybe writing it out and circling so I'm going to read what that says the resultant of three tensions in the guy wires anchored at the top of the tower is vertical in other words the X component is zero right in other words it's straight up and down so that in that you get your answer to this problem here because you'll see there's a potential here that one of these others won't solve it and so let's see if we can actually do some calculation using the unit circle instead of just taking out our calculators 
useful to do it. And I'm just going to kind of do tick, tick, tick. I'm just going to, in my head, say, boy, I'm going to say 60, 45, and 30. And I'm going to remember that 60 is something, 45 is something, and 30 is something, comma, 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 over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1 over the square root of, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. And let's see, in fact, if that gets us what we want. As usual, a lot of times these these problems are going to have uh, a lot of 30s and 45s put in. And then if you add to that unit circle this concept of all state technical college, you'll decide what is positive and what is negative. And so you know that the cosine of 45, I'm sorry, the cosine of 45 is going to be x over 1. And x is the square root of 2 over 2 or 0 0.707, so you have 8 times 0 0.707, you start to recognize that number pretty quickly, plus now it's in the 210, so it's a negative, right, negative t sub b times the cosine of 210, cosine of 210 is going to be the same as cosine of 30, but it's going to be negative, cosine of 30 is, of course, square root of 3 over 2, so we might want to just keep that as the square root of 3 over 2. And then the last one is the All C State Technical College, and it's a C, right? You know, T sub B is also 240, which is the same as 60. The cosine of 60 is 1 half, so it's minus T sub B times 1 half, right? So you solve that in the end for t sub b, and you get your answer. Now, I'm going to point out that there is some great use in kind of doing this sometimes without a calculator. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and not take the square root of 3. Uh, but getting a little bit farther with this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit a pause here, and I'm going to actually solve. Before I decide to pause, I have to go ahead and make sure that you know that these all equal to 0. Okay, and then t sub b is equal to, right, about, about, so 8 times 0.7 is about 5.6, right? Take some d sub b the other side and then take the quantity, square root of 3 over 2, right, plus 1 half, and you'll get the solution for t sub b. It's my fervent hope. What did I, how did I do that? Well, I went ahead and I moved both of the T sub B's and these over to one side. I took out the T sub B and then divided by the quantity, square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half, and that should be my solution. Now, I will check that and do this one graphically. I think I already have in the past. But recognizing and reading and highlighting everything that is in your given sometimes in a problem is one way to do things. The other way to do things is just solve the problem. In other words, as a rule, in structures, you need to you just go ahead and describe everything. It's one of these problems where you don't necessarily always, 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 um, kind of like a, a, a soil problem. If you remember soil problems in terms of weight, volume, you just fill out the box. Well, in structures problems, very often are simple statics problems, you just kind of solve for the reactions and solve for the internal forces. Um, now, realistically, um, that's probably the best single habit, though it is a better habit to actually read in what, what you're asked for. So in this case, our answer should be the T sub B equals 56, 5.6 over the, the uh, quantity square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half. We should start to know the square root of 3 over 2, but I have to admit, I don't know it, so I'm going to hit pause and, by golly, get a calculator. Okay, so we end up with, and 0.866 starts to sound familiar, doesn't it? Can't believe I don't have that one, but if I then take 5.6 divided by 0.866, 
we get the answer of about 6.47. We will check that graphically, but in fact, the key thing to this problem was to seeing that the resultant must be vertical and that the tensions were equal. Get used to picking out key aspects so you can, you know, a lot of these problems are exactly the same. A lot of the problems that you'll see in the world are exactly the same, but you've got to pick out the key information. Thanks for listening.